my great honor to read uh, after Teco uh, Ed's song last night, Some of My Heroes. Uh, I'll just read a few poems and then we'll uh, take a quick break and uh, sing some songs. <coughs> so this first poem is uh, after Walt Whitman's After the Compost. It's called Meat Wheel. It always lingers, even the sweetest embraces, retreat into, do into the bar's dull light, too drunk to fuck, disembodied brain, vomits will to power, putrid sui genera, throbbing puddles, how can you become the chocolate leaf between my molars, as well as brontosaurus dumb? By divine ideology, into whose cellars did you bury your bodies, my buddies, drinking or straight? Where are the buckets of urine and tears? The bar glimmers like a freshly bathed newborn. I will not knead my claws into your wafer, lest blood clots ride rapids of pus. Ye mira, just look at this dump. Every amoeba was once a beloved grandfather. Up jumps spring, mushroom bursts through and skull. Every charnel ground will one day be a jungle. New babes shriek out, washed out of sewage. Dogs now stick snouts in, licking, taking in the air that lustfully embraces lecherous oceans that, fe that fetishize our toes. The disgust outside can't compare to our wretched interior. I gag upon hearing it's what inside that counts. The world keeps turning its compost bin, alchemically becoming and destroying. Meat wheel keep on turning, heaven and earth to peace beguile. called In the Time of Prodigus. Once twas all good, all God, all Gagaku. Then he wound the watch, set its ticking with nervous jealousy. Rats liberated from cages, donned wares and heirs and heirs. Queens, magi, judge or ye be judged. Who points their pince knees now? The Nez Purse? The Tea Party? A bunch of motherfuckers with xenophobic fervor, cursing pursed mayo lips, a world made of spoon bread. Return to them, old Damon, for the ass thinks and speaks through their mouths. after Rilke's death. Here stands a glass in no hurry to be filled with no longing of its own, gravity's unceasing seizing, hypnotized by its prismatic rainbow and air's invisible snow globe dusting its frozen liquid. It symbolizes itself the quivering flesh past and future, horses made to drink. Thank you. And I just like to have to end with a technical difficulty since that's a common thing here. So I will have my technical difficulty right now. <laughs> now I wanted to honor Allen Ginsberg and all the uh, all of our Czech friends that spoke today by uh, mispronouncing some Czech words for you. Maybe you can help me out. So. 
Um, okay, my technical difficulties over. So this crazy intellectual journey started for me after a football practice when I was a freshman in high school. I was obsessed with Bob Dylan and was doing a saturation job on Bob Dylan, a high schooler's best version of that. And so I had heard about Allen Ginsberg just in passing references. And I was thumbing through the local paper and saw that Allen Ginsberg was speaking or signing books at Powell Bookstore in Portland. So I begged my mother to leave work early, pick me up from my bas or not basketball, football practice, and drive me down to Powell Bookstores, which is where I met Allen Ginsberg, who was the kindest soul and generous spirit that I had ever met, and also just incredibly brilliant. I knew, really knew nothing about him when I met him, but he took so much interested me as far as um, what my plans were and how I was going to pursue my intellect and talent. And I'm from kind of a cow town where people don't talk to you like that. So a few years later when I had to go to college, my mother was saying that I was going to go to the state university. And luckily I um, got too stoned when I had to take my algebra test and uh, couldn't go to the University of Washington. So I was at a community college and doing my next saturation job, which was on Ginsburg. Everything I could find about Ginsburg, I read. And um, read about Naropa University, or at that time, Naropa Institute. And the rest, as they say, is history. The school that Ann Waldman founded with Allen is really an amazing hub of, and community um, for so many great people around the world and all the great people that I've met in my life. So I'm eternally grateful and the uh, benevolence of that school and Anne's work there is uh, going to echo into eternity. So I want to honor Alan by reading The King of May. How do we say it in Czech? Kral Mayalis. Kral Mayalis. All right, I'll do my best. Do it. <laughs> and the communists have nothing to offer but fat cheeks and eyeglasses and lying policemen and the capitalists proffer napalm and money and green suitcases to the naked, and the communists create heavy industry, but the heart is also heavy, and the beautiful engineers are all dead. The secret technici technicians conspire for their own glamour. In the future, in the future, but now drink vodka and lament the security forces. And the capitalists drink gin and whiskey on airplanes, but let Indian brown millionaires starve, and when communists and capitalist assholes tangle, the just man is arrested or robbed or has his head cut off. But not like Kabir and the cigarette cough of the just man above the clouds and the bright sunshine and the salute to the health of the blue sky. For I was arrested thrice in Prague, once for singing drunk on Narodny Street, once knocked down on the midnight pavement by a mustached agent who screamed out, Buzerant! Once for losing my notebook of unusual sex politic dream opinions, and I was sent from Havana by planes by detectives in green uniform, and I was sent from Prague by plane by detectives in Czechoslovakian business suits, card players out of Cezanne, the two strange dolls that entered Joseph K.'s room at morn, also entered mine and ate at my table and examined my scribbles and followed me night and morn from the houses of the lovers to the cafes of the Centrum. And I am the King of May, which is the power of sexual youth. And I am the King of May, which is long hair of Adam and beard of my own body. And I am the King of May, which is Kral Maelis in the Czechoslovakian tongue. And I am the King of May, which is old human poesy. And a hundred thousand people chose my name. And I am the King of May, and in a few minutes I will land at London Airport. And I am the King of May, naturally, for I am of Slavic parentage, and a Buddhist Jew who worships the sacred heart of Christ, the blue body of Krishna, the straight back of Ram, the beads of Chango, the Nigerian singing Shiva Shiva in a manner which I have, I have invented. And the King of May is a middle European honor, mine in the 20th century, despite spaceships and the time machine, because I have heard the voice of Blake in a vision and repeat that voice. And I am the King of May that sleeps with teenagers. 
And now I'm the king of Maine, so I'm having a technical problem again. There we go. As I was saying, I'm the king of May that sleeps with teenagers laughing. And I am the king of May that I might be expelled from my kingdom with honor as of old to show the difference between Caesar's kingdom and the kingdom of May of man. And I am the king of May because I touched my finger to my forehead saluting a luminous heavy girl trembling hands who said, one moment, Mr. Ginsburg, before a fat young plain clothesman stepped between our bodies, I was going to England. And I am the King of May in a giant jet plane touching Albion's airfield, trembling in fear as the plane roars to a landing on the gray concrete, shakes and expels air, and rolls slowly to a stop under the clouds with part of blue heaven still visible. And though I am the King of May, the Marxists have beat me upon the street, kept me up all night in the police station, followed me through springtime Prague, detained me in secret, and deported me from our kingdom by airplane. This I have written, this poem, on a jet seat in mid-heaven. So that was a poem that Ellen wrote, uh, leaving Prague after being declared the King of May in 1965. Thank you all. So please uh, grab your libations and get happy, because it's time to rock and roll. Woo! <laughs>